All right, I believe we are live right now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Smile Shot or a session. Today we have Dr. Apostol with us, and he is a cosmetic dentist practicing in the Philippines. And with that being said, Dr. Apostol, you can take it away when you are ready. All right. So thank you very much, uh, Smile Shadowers, for inviting me to be part of your uh, virtual shadowing. So I'm Dr. Jonas Apostol. So I'm going to introduce myself briefly. I have uh, my own family. I have a wife and a three-year-old son. And uh, this is my hashtag Apostolified. Uh, I actually banded uh, our, uh, you know, uh, dental clinic with an Apostolified hashtag. So you can see my cases there on Instagram. And um, this is my team, my clinical team. I have two teams. I have this uh, clinical and uh, laboratory team. So back in 2008, I took the photo like after I got my license as a dentist here in the Philippines. And uh, I actually, you know, did a lot of like mission trips, um, also hang out with friends, and some few um, uh, night outs, of course. It's very important for sanity. <laughs> and this was me, like uh, after getting my license, of course, I, I need to make sure that um, I have a goal. So this was my vision goal. So I actually, uh, I create a goal to make sure that I can be able to like um, mark everything with a, a date and um, be able to move forward and look forward on the future. I mean, you really have to set it in your mind first before you get something. So this is the usual me. I mean, uh, I have, this is my crib. I do a lot of studying up until now. Like up until now, I make sure that I learn a lot. Like, especially in the, um, the advancement of dentistry, it's very, very important that we can be able to um, advance ourselves like studying. Because right now, like uh, dentistry 20 years ago is far different from today. Like even with the bonding, with the cement that we're using, the composites, it's really it's really uh, different. It's because of technology. I mean, uh, we really have to keep up. And uh, one of my motto is that you have to be better than your, yourself every day, like even like 1% a day. So reading is a must for me every day. So um, this is why, this is where I graduated, you know, my, I took my, I, I got my uh, um, dental medicine degree, Ilo Ilo Doctors College, and some few institutions because I trained a lot. Like I trained for uh, a six months preceptorship in orthodontics and uh, surgical, oral surgery training in the hospital dentistry for nine months. And also I took a nathology which is for the occlusion, which is very, very important. I also got um, dental implants training. And of course, uh, comprehensive restorative and aesthetic dentistry. And I took all this, um, uh, uh, it's actually a certification for, you know, more than 10 years, something like that, you know. So I made sure that I, uh, I actually equip my mind for this. I also have like international membership. Like I am, an, I am a member of International Association for Orthodontics and American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry in the States, of course. And uh, I am an international educator for International Academy of Aesthetics. So what is cosmetic dentistry? When we talk about cosmetic dentistry, we are making sure that uh, whenever we touch the, the teeth and it proves the appearance, it's cosmetic dentistry, like through teeth whitening or something like that. 
but with my practice, like I do a lot of veneers, fixed bridge, dental crowns, composite bonding. So I need to incorporate these three basic uh, fundamentals. Like it should be healthy, it should be functional, and it should be beautiful. So aesthetics is very, very important. We're not just talking about the not only by emulation or not only the beautiful, uh, a beautiful natural size of teeth, but also it should complement the face. So that's mainly my practice then to facial aesthetics. So how did I become a cosmetic dentist? So apart from all the trainings I got and uh, all the you know reading and um, researching every day with a new um, method on how to do uh, on how to do like my or how to improve my cosmetic um, result, I have to invest in going to the states, and going to Europe, and going to Southeast Asia, Dubai, just to make sure that, you know, I equip myself. Um, so last uh, 2019, I went to uh, San Diego to attend uh, AACD uh, conference. I actually um, attended a lot of lectures there and had the opportunity to meet uh, Dr. Pascal Mani. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he's like the uh, father of... Um, or godfather of uh, biomimetic dentistry. So he's the author of Bond, uh, Bonded Porcelain Restorations. I actually read this book for like, not more than four times. So what it's case, I, I, I love this book. It's pretty good and um, it's meaty. You can get a lot of information from that book. It's, it's, it's um, very, very important uh, for me. It's like a Bible to me that one if you really want to uh, start with your cosmetic dentistry career that book is like the best book ever and also wireless age is um i i actually attended also his uh, lecture and got a chance to, to take a photo you know <laughs> and uh that was in chicago 2018 and douglas terry interesting book like Interesting guy, brilliant guy. He has a lot of book also, and I met him. I attended also lectures from ACP, and uh, had the chance to shadow at Dr. Dorfman, uh, Dorfman's clinic. He's so nice. Like he allowed me to go to his clinic, um, be able to shadow like all the preparation, cementation, bridge veneers implants is really good like he is actually uh, one of the dentists i look up to and uh, you know clinically he's really good so so these are the you know uh and, and also yeah I, I as what i've mentioned locally at the broad like uh, southeast asia also uh I also attended a lot of seminars pre-COVID. Yeah. And why? Why cosmetic dentistry? One of the um, one of the uh, reasons is that I actually give this um, opportunity for the patient to be able to feel good about themselves, not just fixing their teeth or improving the health or the function but also allowing them to feel good or look good. So it's actually one of the um, factors that I, you know, the, the willingness to help these people with or without um, payments or something like that. I, I actually do this for, for the profession and for the love of, you know, cosmetic dentistry. So, all right, I'm gonna show you some of my interesting
Dr. Pasta, are you still there? All right, guys, there may have been some technical difficulties, but uh, we will resume soon. Hello. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> You're Internet perfectly here. fine. <laughs> Thank you. It was a problem with the connection. So I'll... Is it good? Is it good? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. So let's proceed with the uh, yeah indirect. I've, as as what I have mentioned, there's a two types of materials that I'm using here in my clinic. We have the indirect um, Emax porcelain. If you're familiar with that, that's actually the most common material in the world that every educator or every um, yeah international educator that I've attended to they've actually uh, using Emax porcelain or lithium desalicate. And also I am using, here in, the, here, in my, here in my clinic, I'm using the layer zirconia. It's a zirconia core layered with porcelain to make it uh, look natural. And that picture actually is a layered zirconia. So I'm using that in my dental practice. So case number one. So this patient went to my clinic with uh, an obvious concern. So there's a crooked teeth. Actually, this is a lingual lock canine, and uh, it's basically basically crossbite. And also, we are looking at this shifted or twisted premolars and uh, bucoverted second premolar. And also, there's a root canal treated tooth with um, filling. Uh, composite bonding, and it has a uh, fracture and uh, stains already. So after assessment, of course, we need to get all the diagnostics. Like we're talking about x-ray, um, diagnostic cast, pictures, and um, clinical assessment. So after thorough assessment, this is actually for orthodontic treatment to correct the, or to straighten the teeth. But uh, the patient is not based here in the country, in the Philippines. So he actually wanted to like, um, like wanted to have like a very like instant gratification or something like that because he doesn't have the time to uh, for any orthodontic treatment. And I actually um, asked him to do like, uh, aligners or like Invisalign and he is not comfortable with the um, with the uh, aligner treatment as well so I gave him a second best choice which is to get rid or to improve the appearance of the teeth through veneers so I did a mock-up first okay so there are two types of doing a smile design. First, uh, we have this uh, digi digital smile design, which is uh, very, very common nowadays. But me in my practice, I don't do digital smile design because of maybe the influx of the patient. I and uh, I have a lot of like every day I'm used. I'm doing a lot of veneers and smile makeover. Uh, so I'm used to doing a smile design through composite. Um, using composite so this is a direct smile design like I can shape reshape the teeth 
the lengths, distribute everything. We can also um, choose a shade that is appropriate to the patient because in uh, my way of doing this is smile this a direct smile design. I can be able to check the the musculature, the lips, and also in relation to the face, and that is very important for me. It's uh, dental facial aesthetics is uh, important. What um, if I do like a smile design? I make sure that it should be in harmony in the patient's face, and it should be like that because uh, they're asking for like a healthy and functional, but beautiful is very, I mean, aesthetics is very, very important. So this is the after. Okay, so you can see here, uh, I change not just the, not just the shade and the sizes, but also there's a symmetry in there. And then um, let's go back here. You can see uh, the pink statics here. We placed a pink porcelain here to make sure that we can be able to mimic the color of the gums. And the teeth has nuances of a natural uh, structure. And you can be able to see some translucency, serrations, spirochimara, everything that you see in a natural teeth. But it's a little bit more consistent. It's a little bit more whiter. Not too white, but it's white enough to pop the, you know, the shade and be able to uh, see the improvement of the face. So when you see the teeth right here, you can be able to uh, assess if it's like natural looking because in, um, Cosmetic dentistry, upper teeth should be a little bit, just a little bit whiter than the lower. Um, and also look at the balance here. Here, And the patient actually requested for a, a little bit sharper canines and premolars to like, you know, a more dominant uh, character. So he doesn't want the old uh, design of his teeth, you know. And uh, that's it. So that's just the first. And it's not straightforward. I do a lot of straightforward cases in my here. But these, uh, th this, this type of case is very challenging and also uh, important. And one thing, it is also important to check all the occlusion. We are not just getting or making a beautiful teeth and healthy, it should be functional. So occlusion should be on point, okay? I'm gonna show you later. I have a, I have a machine actually for the occlusion, so I'm gonna show you later how it looks like. So this is the before and this is the after. Okay. And yeah, we have addressed everything like the root canal treated tooth with the staining chipped, uh, central incisors here, uh, also lingual locked. You can see on the after, it's it's a totally different person. It's beautiful. And this guy is, uh, you know, I have, you know, he's satisfied with the result as well. And I'm also satisfied. So that's it. Side to side. So let's proceed with case number two. So this patient went to my clinic with uh, multiple dental concern. Like she hasn't visited her dentist for 10 long years. Okay. So when you're not visiting your dentist that long, you can expect a lot of trouble, a lot of problems, okay? So here, we can see that there are some missing, uh, missing teeth. And it's actually located on the aesthetic zone. Aesthetic zone, when the patient smiles, you can be able to notice that there's something wrong. So, or there's missing. So it, it, it should be addressed. And she's not confident about herself anymore. And she's a singer. 
So, you know, it's it's important for for a performer to have a really nice sets of teeth and healthy as well. So this one, this material right here, it's a temporary filling that's right after root canal treatment. So we did uh, two teeth for uh, endo treatment. So I have a team of specialists also in my clinic. I have an endodontist, I have a periodontist, and I also have an implantologist, and I only do cosmetic dentistry and restorations. Anyway, so there's a lot of there are a lot of problems here. Uh, you can see the cavities here, okay? And here there's actually lingual cavity and also here. So there are a lot of problems like minor cavity. If you do veneers, you have to make sure that you remove all the unsound structure. We are not just creating an, an ideal preparation but we have to make sure that the teeth are healthy, okay? Because if we, uh, if we leave something in there, the bacteria could proliferate and it would damage, okay? The integrity of the teeth and it could create like um, hydrolytic degradation that could uh, create debonding, secondary caries. A lot of issues will be, you know, will be... Uh, the patient will be facing. So we don't want any of those uh, problems. So we have to make sure that it is healthy and remove all the unsound structures. Okay. So again, I do my smile design using composite, direct smile design. So this one is kind of, for me, it's kind of straightforward case. Okay. So my... My treatment for this case, actually, it's a combination of veneers, bridge, and a crown. We have to make sure that we use a very durable material for the um, bridge area, okay? Um, for this case, I used layered uh, zirconia, okay? A zirconia fused, uh, a porcelain fused to zirconia, and this actually smile design, yeah, as, as, as I have mentioned a while ago, smile design or direct smile design is important for me because I can be able to check everything. Like if the patient wanted a longer central incisors and then she wanted to have a little bit of character, then we can incorporate it directly. So I can actually do a direct smile design in just 50, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And then I um, let the patient like check herself for the next 15 minutes. And then if she's happy or if she wants to do a little bit of um, like modification, then we do it. Okay. So here, here is the thing. After the patient agreed with the design, I took an impression. I'm, I took the impression and that will be the base for her temporary. Okay, so she will go home with the same design that I did. Okay, so that she can be able to gauge if she did the right decision. And, you know, it's her teeth. She knows her face. So if she wanted to have uh, some modification, then we can do it during try-in. Okay, so try-in is a must before cementing the ceramics properly or cementing it permanently. We, we need to make sure that everything's clear from start to finish. This is a way more predictable for me and for the patient as well. So smile design is, for me, it's the most important uh, procedure before you start any, uh, uh, any teeth preparation, okay? Especially for a veneers or smell this or like a long you know like minimum of eight units something like that so you have to make sure that everything's perfect okay then to facial aesthetics is very important we have to check the curvature of the lips okay we have to check 
the age of the patient, we also need to check or to know uh, some habits of the patient. The skin tone is very important. The color of the eye and um, these things must be considered, okay? And also the TMJ, if there's something wrong with the, the bite and also like uh, there's clicking or uh, experiencing lockjaw or something like that, we have to note everything like from not just the dental, also with the systemic, we, we, we need to make sure that everything's uh, okay, okay? So that's the preparation. So usually for veneers, I don't remove any, and I don't remove any sound structure, okay? I just need to establish the margin. But for some cases like this type of case, it's actually, there's actually a lot of damage on the, on the teeth, like class three cavities, uh, a lot of um, lingual cavities, a lot of uh, issues. So we have to make sure that we remove all those. That's why the preparation, it's a little bit more aggressive than before. So this one right here, it's bridge, okay? And uh, this one, it's almost crown and veneer preparations. So I placed in the deflection cord to make sure that we get all the margins and uh, these are the, or that that's actually important in getting the right fit or creating a right fit for the indirect ceramics. So a lot of, a lot of techniques should be done because this is not like a straightforward uh, approach it should be it, these are like technique sensitive wherein when you miss one um, step then it can actually affect the final result okay so as what I've mentioned I have my own dental laboratory so from the clinic to the lab I, I can communicate directly with my ceramist to make sure that uh, they get me the right uh, design. So they copy the design that I have, but they improve it, okay? So this is the after. So why, why actually bridge? So the patient has a tight budget also. I actually um, given her the choice of uh, dental implants before uh, doing this. But due to like um, budget and also it will take time for the bone to, uh, because for this case, the bone has already resorbed. So we need to do um, bone grafting, uh, bone augmentation to make sure that we have the right amount of bone for the osseointegration with the dental implant. But it will take time, like a year or something like that for us to complete everything. But she's not willing to do that and she's not willing to wait. So we, uh, she decided to have this uh, type of treatment. So it looks perfect for me. It looks beautiful. Okay, dentofacial wise, it looks really nice. As you can see here, um, the occlusion is good. And the lips, it follows the lips. And the, the profile has improved as well and it is healthy functional and uh, beautiful i called it a postolified smile okay so this is the before and after so there yeah, it's a huge improvement yeah the size the shape the contour especially the, the nuances of a natural structure, the translucency, it's there. So, yeah. All right. Interesting, yeah. So I have this uh, case number three. I have a lot of cases, like I can show you hundreds of cases, but, you know, we have a limited time. So let's proceed with case number three. Um, so this is the last case for indirect. Okay. 
I also have direct uh, cases later. So for indirect, this one is, uh, as you can see here, there's a symmetrical smile. The canine here is a little bit longer than the others and she's a denture wearer for six years. And it's pretty obvious that it's uh, not healthy. She has a, yeah, okay. You can see here, this is a cavity right there, okay? And uh, usually the approach here is like, they have to make sure that uh, they have this um, removable partial denture. Like, it's not really super common to have a small makeover here in the Philippines. It's because of the cost. It's uh, kind of expensive for um, like an eight unit or six units. It's kind of expensive. That's why they always choose the, the removable denture because it's a lot cheaper. But with this young lady, she, she's not happy with their smile. So, okay, so I did the smile design. So smile designing, yeah, again, it's very important through composite. And then uh, I also make sure that, you know, the shade is in uh, harmony with the skin tone. And with this one, she actually requested for me a bleach shade because she has uh, a little bit um, fair um, complexion and she wanted to uh, have a striking smile, you know. So I did the preparation with the cord on, of course, to make sure that we deflect the gums properly. And um, this is a bridge, combination of bridge and a veneer lay. So a veneer lay, it's a combination of the preparation is like onlay and veneer. So it's still, uh, it, we can be still be able to like um, save some sound structure on the lingual area. So I always do a lot of this because I, I don't want shaving the natural, natural structure, especially if there's any problem. So I, I don't create like crown for no reason. It should be reasonable for me because saving the tooth is very, very important or saving any structure of the teeth is very important for me. Okay, so that's the after. It's, it's pretty white, yeah. And that's it. It looks balanced now. And uh, we all, yeah, as what I have mentioned a while ago, we made sure that everything should be perfect first before we cement it permanently. So I did a try-in and then when the patient's happy, then we cement it uh, permanently. So this one is a layered zirconia, zirconia core with the porcelain on top to make sure that we get all the details as well. Like she wanted to have a translucency on the front teeth, longer sets of teeth. So from this to this, it's way different now. She's a different person now. And that with, that's what makes me happy actually because of the result that we are getting. So in doing the smile makeover or smile uh, transformation, we make sure that everything's healthy and um, dental education is very important because once you have this type of a restoration and then you don't clean it properly, like you don't floss, this will fail. This will not be an advantage for you because we want to make sure that everything's healthy, okay? From start to finish. And if you want to have a good prognosis, you have to make sure that you clean it properly. I mean, as a dentist, we have a limitation, okay? So that's why with that limitations, we make sure that we give our best. Um, like there should be no room for mistakes, especially with the health. And uh, yeah, for, for every, every um, smile makeover, sometimes I ask the patient to come back after like three months to make sure that everything's perfect, like the gums has adapted well. And uh, also we, we need to make sure that the other teeth like this 
area should be addressed and all the cavities should be, um, be able to, you know, uh, removed and filled with the right um, composite material. Okay, let's proceed with the direct composite bonding. So this is the most common procedure here in the Philippines. It's because it's way cheaper and uh, it can change the whole, the whole structure of the teeth. Um, it can also enhance the totality of the face. And it's a lot um, easier to do. Like it's actually an instant gratification. Like we can do it for three hours and then we can be able to create a beautiful smile. But there's pros and cons also. Like for direct composite restoration, it's like prone to staining. It's because it's permeable. It's, it's only like resin and uh, uh, there's a tendency of chipping off, but you know, there's, there's a limitation to that. And the patient should be aware of the, of the disadvantages. Case number four. So this one is pretty interesting. I'm not giving you guys a straightforward cases because you can see that all over, you know, in the internet, but this one, I have a lot of interesting, difficult cases. Like this one, this is class three. Uh, it's edge to edge, okay? So there's problem with the bite. And it's challenging when you have that kind of case, okay? This is actually for, it should be for indirect because we need a little bit more um, durable material, okay? But we have to consider also the uh, budget and the patient should understand the pros and cons of why uh, the direct composite bonding is, uh, and the, uh, why, why he would or she would choose the material, you know. So, so for this one, this is an old restoration uh, to front teeth. And you can see a lot of cavities here here and here, almost all uh, teeth involved. So we are doing eight unit direct composite bonding here. And notice that the color of the lower teeth, it's whiter than the upper. So, and also it does not suit with her face. Like it's too small for her face. And there's a diastemata, which is very, very obvious. So I did the preparation. So one thing with uh, direct uh, composite bonding, it's more uh, minimally invasive rather than the uh, indirect because with indirect, you have to establish margin and all and, and everything. But with this case, we have to remove a lot. It's because there are a lot, there's a lot, there are a lot of issues here. Like, the old composite must be removed. The cavities must be removed. Uh, every, every unsound structure must be removed. We, I don't want to put in my composite if there's any, some, if there's any um, cavities in there. So health is very, very important. But in the real world, like ideally, you can actually do a no, no prep veneers, okay? Especially with uh with um direct composite bonding but in reality there are a few teeth that has no problem because if you yeah all unsound structure must be removed that is my that is my way of uh, doing my preparation uh, I, I don't want for ideal sake of preparation i i, I don't i don't uh, compromise the health. So health is number one, number two function, number three aesthetics. Okay, so getting the right uh, shade is also important. Okay, so I don't do like a monolithic one shade for just for everything. I actually do a combination of composite. 
So this is the after. Okay, so it's a little bit whiter than before. I actually changed the height and the size, made sure also that it's uh, symmetrical and also in harmony with the patient's face. Look at the shade on the lower and upper. It's, it's not that striking anymore because when the patient talks before, uh, her chief complaint is that the, the lower is too obvious, it's too white and the upper it's not visible so right now she's actually happy with the with with the smile design or with the smile transformation so this is one of the technique that the smile design using composite in the indirect i got that or i mastered that because of the direct composite bonding okay so with this type of uh, with this type of uh, treatment, I use this every day. And uh, so the problem here is that it's prone to chipping, right? That's why the patient is wearing night guard every night, night guard to make sure that um, there's no to, to prevent the chipping off, especially uh, when you're asleep. It's because of some parafunctional contacts that's uh, unpredictable. That's why I run it with my T-scan. Everything, the T-scan actually is a machine that you can check the force and the symmetry. And there's like a uh, distribution, like if it's 50-50 or 80-20. So you can be able to see the dominant teeth that are uh, giving a lot of pressure. So you can easily equilibrate, okay? equilibrate the the whole the whole mouth okay so that is very very important in the success of every uh smile makeover or smile transformation it, one of the problems with uh restoration nowadays is that if they put in the filling it's just one it's just one filling could actually damage the tooth could actually damage the tmj could actually damage the or give problems with the nerves and the muscles because it should be in harmony everything should be in harmony okay and um, one of the advan uh, one of the um, advantages is that i am using the t-scan machine and uh, it's innovation in dentistry because we can be able to check the detail exactly if uh, if there's any something wrong. That's why um, it's such a subjective articulating paper that you can, you know, you have to ask the patient and um, master your mythology and something like that. But with the help of the, the machine, it can actually, uh, it's more of like, uh, it's, it's, it's easier, it's easier, something like that. Okay, case number five. So just direct uh, veneer. So before and after, you can see here the shade, it's almost the same as the other teeth. This is just a four unit of uh, direct composite bonding. I just changed here the, the size of the lateral and it's a little bit discolored and also the size of the, the central. So these are like combination of dentine and enamel uh, shade only. So it's pretty straightforward and it's like a few hours, like an hour or two hours uh, uh, treatment. So that's it. It's healthier version of uh, herself and that's it. Case number six. Um, actually, these are beauty vloggers. She's a beauty vlogger. And this one, she's also a beauty vlogger. So as you can see here, the smile, it's, it's like a reverse curved. And I change it to like this one. We have to follow the 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 curvature of the the curvature of the lower lip of course and uh, 
when she actually talks, the upper teeth are not visible before. So I changed the height and also the angulation of the teeth, you know, the angulation of the front teeth. So it's been like three years. Uh, it's, already, it's already three year old uh, directed year. So it's pretty interesting. And I like the result and she loves the result also. Okay. In doing uh, cosmetic dentistry, we have to innovate. Okay, innovation is the key to everything. I mean, I, I live here in the Philippines. I, this is my home country. I studied here. I practice here, here. I live here. But I don't see the point that I need to... I, I don't see any uh, reasons not to innovate. I mean, I have to make sure that I'm updated with the newest um, material in cosmetic dentistry, not just in cosmetic, but also in uh, restorative and prosthodontics. The, all the innovation, all the articles, I am actually working with uh, some um, very, uh, very good educators abroad because we want to make sure that we know all the, the latest um, studies about dentistry in making or creating a more beautiful, more stable, more durable um, smile. So creativity is also important. Use what you have in your clinic. I actually do a lot of brainstorming and, you know, uh, we need to make sure that we are doing everything right from start to finish. Uh, one of the one of the um, most important things is that you have to set a goal. Okay, setting a goal from start from the very very start, and then um, try achieving these things. And I started with like nothing, as you can see. Uh, a while ago in the picture, like I I can't even buy my own like sets of clothing or something like that because of you know uh after uh, after graduating or getting my license as a dentist it's uh pretty difficult here i mean if you work here it's it's difficult like the most difficult i actually <laughs> i don't know uh, also, we have to make sure that we develop, we study every day. We, we, you need to make sure that you are focused on your goals. Okay, so this is my um, CAD CAM machine uh, in Love MCX5. I have the latest um, software, which is Software 20. That's the latest uh, software from Dancefly Serona. And uh, I also have Emacs press machine. So I make I always make sure that I have the the right material, the right cement, the right machine, the right people, because um, this is not a one-man team. It's actually it, it should work synergistically to be able to create the result that um, you want and the patient wants. So this is my T-scan machine so that you will have an idea. This one, you can be able to check the force, uh, the distribution, the symmetry, and also the, the pressure on the during lateral excursion. So it's a new technology. And I am not sure if you're familiar with this because here, like we, like few clinics has the, uh, have this kind of machine because it's like uh, new in the market. Okay. It's not new, new, but it's kind of new. Okay. So I've been using this for three years now. So this is my own words. <laughs> Every patient's teeth is important and saving each of them requires specialized skills and knowledge in preserving every part of it. So that's it. And I'm 
I'm good. I'm done. Uh, thank you guys, and you can follow me on Facebook at Makati Dentist by Apostol Dental, uh, Instagram Apostol Dental, and I have a YouTube channel, so you can actually search me, Apostol Dental. I explain there some of my cases, like a lot of interesting cases, and we have a TikTok account also. <laughs> I don't dance there, but you know we are sometimes. But I'm I'm showcasing my uh, my uh, cases there. So yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Apostle, for all the cases um, and all the insight that you shared today. Um, we do have a few questions in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. And the first one is. What advice would you give to a high school student who knows they want to pursue a career in the dental field? You have to, uh, you have to make sure that you, you have a knowledge with the profession that you're getting in because dentistry is uh, very, very, I mean, it's very challenging and you have to be committed. So you have to know all the, uh like you have to learn from like students like you guys on how it feels like to be uh in the dental school but um you have to have an end goal like for you to become you know a successful dentist sorry i actually not i actually this is not my first choice but you know i have committed my life right now with the profession and uh, you just have to be committed with with the profession that you that you want to get in, because yeah, it's it's not a walk in the park uh, profession, and it's it's like that. Commitment. <laughs> awesome. And the next question is, what activities do you recommend um, to us to help improve our dexterity or our hand skills? Okay, that's a very, very important uh, question. For me, I always uh, use the Typodon, even if I, even like, like every day, not, 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 not uh, maybe like after graduating, I still, after I took, I got my license, I still work with the Typodon because I need to make sure that everything's uh, perfect before I enter into and I do it in the patient's mouth, typodont is your best friend. So typodont should be should be there with you for the next five years, even after you graduate. So working with typodont would be the best uh, avenue for you to improve your dexterity. Awesome, thank you. And our next question is, how often are repairs made on both the indirect and direct composites? And how often do the veneers need to be replaced? Sorry for the, can you, yeah. uh, can you repeat it? Yeah, how often do repairs need to be made on indirect and direct composites? And how often do you need to replace veneers? For the, uh, for the replacement, it's like for indirect, we have a study that it can actually uh, last for like 15 years or 20 years, but it really depends on the patient's uh, ability to care of their mouth because cavities are unpredictable sometimes. And based on the studies, uh, like about 10 years for indirect. For direct, we are giving like three years to five years and repair is most common on, on direct restorations. But with indirect, it's actually more durable. That's why uh, it's not common to do like repairs on indirect uh, restorations. So it's uh, always um, subjective. It depends on the patient. If she's if she, if she still loves eating like super hard food, then it's 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 a different story. Awesome, thank you. And our looks like one of the last questions we have in the chat is, 
When you were in dental school, what clinical procedures did you find to be the most challenging? Actually, prosthodontics, like especially the removable and uh, fixed. I, I never liked the, I never liked um, prosthodontics before and restorative, I, I, I never liked this. I, 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 it's very difficult for me and yeah, these are the these are the most difficult uh, for me. It's because of of everything that you have to consider, like even the the degree, like uh, even the like super uh, tiny um, information. You have to incorporate everything. It's like technique sensitive. That's why I love surgery before for me it's like way more easier but you know it's yeah it's uh, prosthodontics and uh, restorative it's way more difficult uh, once again dr apostol thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and share all those interesting cases uh, we do have one more question for you that we ask all the dentists um, that uh, participate in the shadowing sessions. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it could go back in time, maybe to before you started dental school or going through this entire process. Uh, what advice would you give your younger self? Just, just do your best, just study harder and just make sure you have a goal. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, Dr. Apostol, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone that tuned in on YouTube live to watch this session. And also make sure you tune in again tomorrow because we have another guest. And with that being said, the quiz will be open in a few minutes. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So I